The Complete Works of William Shakespeare by William Shakespeare Act 4 Scene I London The Palace Enter Gloucester, Clarence, Somerset, and Montague Gloucester Now tell me, Brother Clarence, what think you of this new marriage with the Lady Grey? Hath not our brother made a worthy choice? Clarence Alas, you know tis far from hence to France. How could he stay till Warwick made return? Somerset. My lords, forbear this talk. Here comes the king. Flourish. Enter King Edward attended, Lady Grey, as queen, Pembroke, Stafford, Hastings, and others. Four stand on one side, and four on the other Gloucester. And his well-chosen bride. Clarence. I mind to tell him plainly what I think. King Edward. Now, brother of Clarence, how like you are choice that you stand pensive as half malcontent. Clarence. As well as Louis of France or the Earl of Warwick, which are so weak of courage and in judgment that they'll take no offense at our abuse. King Edward. Suppose they take offense without a cause. They are but Louis and Warwick. I am Edward. Your king and Warwick's and must have my will. Gloucester. And shall have your will, because our king. Yet hasty marriage seldom proveth well. King Edward. Yea, brother Richard, are you offended too? Gloucester. Not I. No, God forbid that I should wish them severed whom God hath joined together. I, and twere pity to sunder them that yoke so well together. King Edward. Setting your scorns and your mislike aside, tell me some reason why the Lady Grey should not become my wife and England's queen. And you too, Somerset and Montague, speak freely what you think. Clarence. Then this is mine opinion, that King Louis becomes your enemy for mocking him about the marriage of the Lady Bona. Gloucester. And Warwick, doing what you gave in charge, is now dishonored by this new marriage. King Edward. What if both Lewis and Warwick be appeased by such invention as I can devise? Montague. Yet to have joined with France in such alliance would more have strengthened this our commonwealth gains foreign storms than any homebred marriage. Hastings. Why, knows not Montague that of itself England is safe, if true within itself? Montague. But the safer when tis backed with France. Hastings. Tis better using France than trusting France. Let us be backed with God, and with the seas which he hath given for fence impregnable, and with their helps only defend ourselves. In them and in ourselves our safety lies. Clarence. For this one speech Lord Hastings well deserves to have the heir of the Lord Hungerford. King Edward. Ay, what of that? It was my will and grant, and for this once my will shall stand for law. Gloucester. And yet methinks your grace hath not done well to give the heir and daughter of Lord Scales unto the brother of your loving bride. She better would have fitted me or Clarence, but in your bride you bury brotherhood. Clarence. Or else you would not have bestowed the heir of the Lord Boneville on your new wife's son, and leave your brothers to go speed elsewhere. King Edward. Alas, poor Clarence. Is it for a wife that thou art malcontent? I will provide thee. Clarence. In choosing for yourself you showed your judgment, which being shallow, you shall give me leave to play the broker in mine own behalf, and to that end I shortly mind to leave you. King Edward. Leave me or tarry, Edward will be king, and not be tied unto his brother's will. Queen Elizabeth. My lords, before it pleased his majesty to raise my state to title of a queen, do me but right and you must all confess that I was not ignoble of descent, and meaner than myself have had like fortune. But as this title honors me and mine, so your dislikes, to whom I would be pleasing, doth cloud my joys with danger and with sorrow. King Edward, my love, forbear to fawn upon their frowns. What danger or what sorrow can befall thee, so long as Edward is thy constant friend and their true sovereign whom they must obey? Nay whom they shall obey, and love thee too, unless they seek for hatred at my hands, which if they do, yet will I keep thee safe, and they shall feel the vengeance of my wrath. Gloucester. 
Aside, I hear, yet say not much, but think the more. Enter a post, King Edward. Now, messenger, what letters or what news from France? Messenger. My sovereign liege, no letters and few words, but such as I, without your special pardon, dare not relate. King Edward. Go to, we pardon thee, therefore, in brief, tell me their words as near as thou canst guess them. What answer makes King Louis unto our letters? Messenger. At my depart, these were his very words. Go tell false Edward, the supposed king, that Louis of France is sending over maskers to revel it with him and his new bride. King Edward. I ask Louis so brave? Belike he thinks me Henry. But what said Lady Bonnet to my marriage? Messenger. These were her words, utred with mild disdain. Tell him, in hope he'll prove a widower shortly, I'll wear the willow garland for his sake. King Edward. I blame not her, she could say little less, she had the wrong. But what said Henry's key you? E'en? For I have heard that she was there in place. Messenger. Tell him close she my morning weeds are done, and I am ready to put armor on. King Edward. But like she minds to play the Amazon. But what said Warwick to these injuries? Messenger. He more incensed against your majesty than all the rest, discharged me with these words, tell him from me that he hath done me wrong, and therefore I'll uncrown him ere it be long. King Edward. Ha! Durst the traitor breathe out so proud words? Well, I will arm me, being thus forewarned. They shall have wars and pay for their presumption. But say, is Warwick friends with Margaret? Messenger. Aye, gracious sovereign. They are so linked in friendship that young Prince Edward marries Warwick's daughter. Clarence. Be like the elder. Clarence will have the younger. Now, brother king, farewell, and sit you fast, for I will hence to Warwick's other daughter, that, though I want a kingdom, yet in marriage I may not prove inferior to yourself. You that love me and Warwick follow me. Exit, and Somerset follows Gloucester. Aside, not I. My thoughts aim at a further matter. I stay not for the love of Edward but the crown. King Edward. Clarence and Somerset both gone to Warwick. Yet am I armed against the worst can happen, and haste is needful in this desperate case. Pembroke and Stafford, you in our behalf go levy men and make prepare for war. They are already, or quickly will be landed. Myself in person will straight follow you. Excellent Pembroke and Stafford, but ere I go, Hastings and Montague, resolve my doubt. You twain, of all the rest, are near to Warwick by blood and by alliance. Tell me if you love Warwick more than me? If it be so, then both depart to him. I rather wish you foes than hollow friends. But if you mind to hold your true obedience, give me assurance with some friendly vow that I may never have you in suspect. Montague so God help Montague as he proves true. Hastings. And Hastings as he favors Edward's cause. King Edward. Now, Brother Richard, will you stand by us? Gloucester. Aye, in despite of all that shall withstand you. King Edward. Why so? Then am I sure of victory. Now therefore let us hence, and lose no hour till we meet Warwick with his foreign power. Excellent scene two. A plain in Warwickshire enter Warwick and Oxford, with French soldiers Warwick. Trust me, my lord, all hither to goes well. The common people by numbers swarm to U.S. Enter Clarence and Somerset, but see where Somerset and Clarence comes. Speak suddenly, my lords, are we all friends? Clarence. Fear not that, my lord. Warwick. Then, gentle Clarence. Welcome unto Warwick, and welcome, Somerset. I hold it cowardice to rest mistrustful where a noble heart hath pawned an open hand in sign of love. Else might I think that Clarence, Edward's brother, were but a feigned friend to our proceedings. But welcome, sweet Clarence, my daughter shall be thine. And now what rests but in night's coverture, thy brother being carelessly encamped, his soldiers lurking in the towns about, and but attended by a simple guard, we may surprise and take him at our pleasure? 
Our scouts have found the adventure very easy. That as Ulysses and stout Diomede with slight and manhood stole to Rhesus' tents, and brought from thence the Thracian fatal steeds, so we, well covered with the knight's black mantle, at unawares may beat down Edward's guard and seize himself I say not slaughter him, for I intend but only to surprise him. You that will follow me to this attempt, applaud the name of Henry with your leader. They all cry Henry. Why then, let's on our way in silent sort. For Warwick and his friends, God and St. George. Excellent scene three. Edward's camp, near Warwick enter three watchmen, to guard the king's tent first watchmen. Come on, my masters, each man take his stand. The king by this has set him down to sleep. Second watchman. What, will he not to bed? First watchman. Why, no, for he hath made a solemn vow never to lie and take his natural rest till Warwick or himself be quite suppressed. Second watchman. Tomorrow, then, belike, shall be the day, if Warwick be so near as men report. Third watchman. But say, I pray, what nobleman is that that with the king here resteth in his tent? First watchman. Tis the Lord Hastings, the king's chiefest friend. Third watchman. Oh, is it so? But why commands the king that his chief followers lodge in towns about him, while he himself keeps in the cold field? Second watchman. Tis the more honor, because more dangerous. Third watchman. Aye, but give me worship and quietness. I like it better than dangerous honor. If Warwick knew in what estate he stands, tis to be doubted he would waken him. First Watchman Unless our halberds did shut up his passage. Second Watchman Aye, wherefore else guard we his royal tent but to defend his person from night foes? Enter Warwick, Clarence, Oxford, Somerset, and French soldiers, silent all Warwick. This is his tent, and see where s. Tand his guard. Courage, my masters. Honor now or never. But follow me, and Edward shall be ours. First watchman. Who goes there? Second watchman. Stay, or thou deest. Warwick and the rest cry all Warwick. Warwick, and set upon the guard, who fly, crying arm. Arm. Warwick and the rest following them the drum playing and trumpet sounding, re-enter Warwick and the rest bringing the king out in his gown, sitting in a chair. Gloucester and Hastings fly over the stage Somerset. What are they that fly there? Warwick. Richard and Hastings. Let them go. Here is the duke. King Edward. The duke. Why, Warwick, when we parted, thou called the ST me king? Warwick. Aye, but the case is altered. When you discrack me in my embassade, then I degraded you from being king, and come now to create you Duke of York. Alas, how should you govern any kingdom that know not how to use ambassadors, nor how to be contented with one wife, nor how to use your brothers brotherly, nor how to study for the people's welfare, nor how to shroud yourself from enemies? King Edward. Yeah, brother of Clarence, art thou here too? Nay, then I see that Edward needs must down. Yet, Warwick, in despite of all mischance, of thee thyself and all thy complices, Edward will always bear himself as king. Though fortune's malice overthrow my state, my mind exceeds the compass of her wheel. Warwick. Then, for his mind, be Edward England's king, takes off his crown, but Henry now shall wear the English crown and be true king indeed, thou but the shadow. My lord of Somerset, at my request, see that forth with Duke Edward be conveyed unto my brother, Archbishop of York. When I have fought with Pembroke and his fellows, I'll follow you and tell what answer Louis and the Lady Bona send to him. Now for a while farewell, good Duke of York. King Edward. What fates impose, that men must needs abide, it boots not to resist both wind and tide. They lead him out forcibly, Oxford. What now remains, my lords, for us to do but march to London with our soldiers? Warwick. Ay, that's the first thing that we have to do, to free King Henry from imprisonment, and see him seated in the regal throne. Excellent scene 4. London. 
the palace enter Queen Elizabeth and Rivers Rivers. Madam, what makes you in this sudden change? Queen Elizabeth. Why, Brother Rivers, are you yet to learn what late misfortune is befallen King Edward? Rivers. What loss of some pitched battle against Warwick? Queen Elizabeth. No, but the loss of his own royal person. Rivers. Then is my sovereign slain. Queen Elizabeth. Ay, almost slain, for he is taken prisoner, either betrayed by falsehood of his guard or by his foe's sir priest at unawares, and, as I further have to understand, is new committed to the Bishop of York, fell Warwick's brother, and by that our foe. Rivers. These news, I must confess, are full of grief. Yet, gracious madam, bear it as you may, Warwick may lose that now hath won the day. Queen Elizabeth. Till then, fair hope must hinder life's decay. And I the rather wean me from despair for love of Edward's offspring in my womb. This is it that makes me bridal passion and bear with mildness my misfortune's cross. Ay, ay, for this I draw in many a tear and stop the rising of blood-sucking sighs, lest with my sighs or tears I blast or drown King Edward's fruit, true heir to th English crown. Rivers. But, madam, where is Warwick then become? Queen Elizabeth. I am informed that he comes towards London to set the crown once more on Henry's head. Guess thou the rest, King Edward's friends must down. But to prevent the tyrant's violence for trust not him that hath once broken faith I'll henceforth with unto the sanctuary to save at least the heir of Edward's right. There shall I rest secure from force and fraud. Come, therefore, let us fly while we may fly. If Warwick take us, we are sure to die. Excellent scene B. A park near Middleham Castle in Yorkshire enter Gloucester, Lord Hastings, S.I.R. William Stanley, and others Gloucester. Now, my Lord Hastings and Sir William Stanley, leave off to wonder why I drew you hither into this chiefest thicket of the park. Thus stands the case. You know our king, my brother, is prisoner to the bishop here at whose hands he hath good usage and great liberty, and often but attended with weak guard comes hunting this way to disport himself. I have advertised him by secret means that if about this hour he make this way, under the color of his usual game, he shall here find his friends, with horse and men, to set him free from his captivity. Enter King Edward and a huntsman with him huntsman. This way, my lord, for this way lies the game. King Edward Nay, this way, man. See where the huntsmen stand. Now, brother of Gloucester, Lord Hastings, and the rest, stand you thus close to steal the bishop's deer? Gloucester. Brother, the time and case requireth haste. Your horse stands ready at the park corner. King Edward. But whither shall we then? Hastings. To Lynn, my lord, and ship from thence to Flanders. Gloucester. Well, guess, believe me, for that was my meaning. King Edward. Stanley, I will requite thy forwardness. Gloucester. But wherefore stay we? Tis no time to talk. King Edward. Huntsman, what sayst thou? Wilt thou go along? Huntsman. Better do so than tarry and be hanged. Gloucester. Come then, away, let's ha no more ado. King Edward. Bishop, farewell. Shield thee from Warwick's frown, and pray that I may repossess the crown. Excellent scene six. London. The tower flourish. Enter King Henry, Clarence, Warwick, Somerset, young Henry, Earl of Richmond, Oxford, Montague, Lieutenant of the Tower, and attendants King Henry. Master Lieutenant, now that God and friends have shaken Edward from the regal seat and turned my captive state to liberty. My fear to hope, my sorrows unto joys, at our enlargement what are thy due fees? Lieutenant. Subjects may challenge nothing of their esoverains, but if an humble prayer may prevail, I then crave pardon of your majesty. King Henry. For what, lieutenant? For well using me? Nay, be thou sure I'll well requite thy kindness, for that it made my imprisonment a pleasure. I. Such a pleasure as encaged birds conceive when, after many moody thoughts, 
At last by notes of household harmony they quite forget their loss of liberty. But Warwick, after God, thou setst me free, and chiefly therefore I thank God and thee. He was the author, thou the instrument. Therefore, that I may conquer fortune's spite by living low where fortune cannot hurt me, and that the people of this blessed land may not be punished with my thwarting stars, Warwick, although my head still wear the crown, I here resign my government to thee, for thou art fortunate in all thy deeds. Warwick, your grace has still been fanned for virtuous, and now may seem as wise as virtuous by spying and avoiding fortune's malice, for few men rightly temper with the stars. Yet in this one thing let me blame your grace, for choosing me when Clarence is in place. Clarence. No, Warwick, thou art worthy of the sway, to whom the heaveness in thy nativity adjudged an olive branch and laurel crown, as likely to be blessed in peace and war, and therefore I yield thee my free consent. Warwick. And I choose Clarence only for protector. King Henry. Warwick and Clarence, give me both your hands. Now join your hands, and with your hands your hearts, that no dissension hinder government. I make you both protectors of this land, while I myself will lead a private life and in devotion spend my latter days, to sin's rebuke and my Creator's praise. Warwick. What answers Clarence to his sovereign's will? Clarence. That he consents, if Warwick yield consent, for on thy fortune I repose myself. Warwick. Why, then, though loath, yet must I be content? We'll yoke together, like a double shadow to Henry's body, and supply his place, I mean, in bearing weight of government, while he enjoys the honor and his ease. And Clarence, now then it is more than needful forthwith that Edward be pronounced a traitor, and all his lands and goods confiscated. Clarence. What else? And that succession be determined. Warwick. I therein Clarence shall not want his part. King Henry. But with the first of all your chief affairs, let me entreat for I command no more that Margaret your queen and my son Edward be sent for to return from France with speed, for till I see them here, by doubtful fear my joy of liberty is half eclipsed. Clarence. It shall be done, my sovereign, with all speed. King Henry. My lord of Somerset, what use is that? of whom you seem to have so tender care. Somerset. My liege, it is young Henry, Earl of Richmond. King Henry. Come hither, England's hope. Lays his hand on his head, if secret powers suggest but truth to my divining thoughts, this pretty lad will prove our country's bliss. His looks are full of peaceful majesty, his head by nature framed to wear a crown, his hand to wield a scepter and himself likely in time to bless a regal throne. Make much of him, my lords, for this is he must help you more than you are hurt by me. Enter a post, Warwick. What news, my friend? Post. That Edward is escaped from your brother and fled, as he hears since, to Burgundy. Warwick. Unsavory news. But how made he escape? Post. He was conveyed by Richard Duke of Gloucester and the Lord Hastings, who attended him in secret ambush on the forest side and from the bishop's huntsmen rescued him, for hunting was his daily exercise. Warwick. My brother was too careless of his charge. But let us hence, my sovereign, to provide a salve for any sore that may betide. Exent all but Somerset, Richmond, and Oxford Somerset. My lord, I like not of this flight of Edward's, for doubtless Burgundy will yield him help, and we shall have more wars before it be long. As Henry's late presaging prophecy did glad my heart with hope of this young Richmond, so doth my heart misgive me, in these conflicts, what may befall him to his harm and ours. Therefore, Lord Oxford, to prevent the worst, forthwith will send him hence to Brittany, till storms be passed of civil enmity. Oxford. Ay, for if Edward repossess the crown, tis like that Richmond with the rest shall down. Somerset. It shall be so, he shall to Brittany. Come therefore, let's about it speedily. Excellent scene seven. Before York flourish. Enter King Edward, Gloucester, Hastings, and soldiers King Edward. 
Now, Brother Richard, Lord Hastings, and the rest, yet thus far fortune mocketh us immense, and says that once more I shall interchange my wane state for Henry's regal crown. Well have we passed and now repassed the seas, and brought desired help from Burgundy. What then remains, we being thus arrived from Ravensburg Haven before the gates of York, but that we enter, as into our dukedom. Gloucester. The gates made fast. Brother, I like not this, for many men that stumble at the threshold are well foretold that danger lurks within. King Edward. Tush, man, abodements must not now affright us. By fair or foul means we must enter in, for hither will our friends repair to us. Hastings. My liege, I'll knock once more to summon them. Enter on the walls, the mayor of York and his brethren mayor. My lords, we were forewarned of your coming and shut the gates for safety of ourselves, for now we owe allegiance unto Henry. King Edward. But, Master Mayor, if Henry be your king, yet Edward at the least is Duke of York. Mayor. True, my good lord, I know you for no less. King Edward. Why, and I challenge nothing but my dukedom, as being well content with that alone. Gloucester. Aside, but when the fox hath once got in his nose, he'll soon find means to make the body follow. Hastings. Why, Master Mayor, why stand you in a doubt? Open the gates, we are King Henry's friends. Mayor. I say you so? The gates shall then be opened. He descends Gloucester. A wise stout captain, and soon persuaded. Hastings. The good old man would fain that all were well, so twere not long of him. But being end read, I doubt not, I. But we shall soon persuade both him and all his brothers unto reason. Enter below, the mayor and two aldermen King Edward. So, Master Mayor. These gates must not be shut but in the night or in the time of war. What? Fear not, man, but yield me up the keys. Takes his keys, for Edward will defend the town and thee, and all those friends that deign to follow me. March. Enter Montgomery with drum and soldiers Gloucester. Brother, this is Sir John Montgomery, our trusty friend, unless I be deceived. King Edward. Welcome, Sir John. But why come you in arms? Montgomery. To help King Edward in his time of storm, as every loyal subject ought to do. King Edward. Thanks, good Montgomery. But we now forget our title to the crown, and only claim our dukedom till God please to send the rest. Montgomery. Then fare you well, for I will hence again. I came to serve a king and not a duke. Drummer, strike up, and let us march away. The drum begins to march, King Edward. Nay, stay, Sir John, a while, and we'll debate by what safe means the crown may be recovered. Montgomery. What talk you of debating? In few words, if you'll not here proclaim yourself our king, I'll leave you to your fortune and be gone to keep them back that come to succor you. Why shall we fight, if you pretend no title? Gloucester. Why, brother, wherefore stand you on nice points? King Edward. When we grow stronger, then we'll make our claim. Till then tis wisdom to conceal our meaning. Hastings. Away with scrupulous wit. Now arms must rule. Gloucester. And fearless minds climb soonest unto crowns. Brother, we will proclaim you out of hand. The brute thereof will bring you many friends. King Edward. Then be it as you will, for tis my right, and Henry but usurps the diadem. Montgomery. Ay, now my sovereign speaketh like himself, and now will I be Edward's champion. Hastings. Sound trumpet, Edward shall be here proclaimed. Come, fellow soldier, make thou proclamation. Gives him a paper. Flourish, soldier. Reads Edward the Fourth, by the grace of God, King of England and France, and Lord of Ireland, and C. Montgomery. And whoso again says King Edward's right, by this I challenge him to single fight. Throws down gauntlet all. Long live Edward the Fourth, King Edward. Thanks, brave Montgomery, and thanks unto you all. If fortune serve me, I'll requite this kindness. 
Now for this night let's harbor here in York, and when the morning sun shall raise his car above the border of this horizon, we'll forward towards Warwick and his mates, for well I wot that Henry is no soldier. Ah, forward Clarence, how evil it beseems thee to flatter Henry and forsake thy brother. Yet, as we may, we'll meet both thee and Warwick. Come on, brave soldiers, doubt not of the day, and that once gotten, doubt not of large pay. Accent scene 8. London. The palace flourish. Enter King Henry, Warwick, Montague, Clarence, Oxford, and Exeter Warwick. What council, lords? Edwa. Ardy from Belgia, with hasty Germans and blunt Hollanders, hath passed in safety through the narrow seas and with his troops doth march amain to London, and many giddy people flock to him. King Henry. Let's levy men and beat him back again. Clarence. A little fire is quickly trodden out, which, being suffered, rivers cannot quench. Warwick. In Warwickshire I have true-hearted friends, not mutinous in peace, yet bold in war. Those will I muster up, and now, son Clarence, shalt stir up in Suffolk, Norfolk, and in Kent, the knights and gentlemen to come with thee. Thou, brother Montague, in Buckingham, Northampton and in Leicestershire shalt find men well inclined to hear what thou commands. And now, brave Oxford, wondrous well beloved, in Oxfordshire shalt muster up thy friends. My sovereign, with the loving citizens, like to his island girt and with the ocean or modest yen circled with her nymphs, shall rest in London till we come to him. Fair lords, take leave and stand not to reply. Farewell, my sovereign. King Henry. Farewell, my Hector and my Troy's true hope. Clarence. In sign of truth, I kiss your highness' hand. King Henry. Well-minded Clarence, be thou fortunate. Montague. Comfort, my lord, and so I take my leave. Oxford. Kissing the king's band, and thus I seal my truth and bid adieu. King Henry. Sweet Oxford, and my loving Montague and all at once, once more a happy farewell. Warwick. Farewell, sweet lords, let's meet at Coventry. Exit all but the king and Exeter King Henry. Here at the palace will I rest a while. Cousin of Exeter, what thinks your lordship? Methinks the power that Edward hath in field should not be able to encounter mine. Exeter. The doubt is that he will seduce the rest. King Henry. That's not my fear. My meat hath got me fame. I have not stopped mine ears to their demands, nor posted off their suits with slow delays. My pity hath been balm to heal their wounds. My mildness hath allayed their swelling griefs. My mercy dried their water-flowing tears. I have not been desirous of their wealth, nor much oppressed them with great subsidies, nor forward of revenge, though they much erred. Then why should they love Edward more than me? No, Exeter, these graces challenge grace, and when the lion fawns upon the lamb, the lamb will never cease to follow him. Shout within a Lancaster. A Lancaster. Exeter. Hark, hark, my lord. What shouts are these? Enter King Edward, Gloucester, and soldiers King Edward. Seize on the shame of eat Henry, bear him hence, and once again proclaim us King of England. You are the fount that makes small brooks to flow. Now stops thy spring. My sea shall suck them dry, and swell so much the higher by their ebb. Hence with him to the tower, let him not speak. Accent some with King Henry and lords, towards Coventry bend we our course, where peremptory Warwick now remains. The sun shines hot, and if we use delay, cold biding winter mars our hop for hay. Gloucester Away betimes, before his forces join, and take the great grown traitor unawares. Brave warriors, march amain towards Coventry. Excellent.